Hey there, Becky here from Inside the Square, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create a collection of events in your Squarespace website. I've got some important timestamps listed in the description below in case you want to jump ahead, but without further ado, I'll go ahead and share my screen so we can get started. Here we are inside Squarespace, and to add this event collection, I'm going to navigate to my Pages menu where I can access the content of my site. When I click on Pages, you should see the option for Main Navigation and Not Linked. You can click either one of these plus signs to add an event to your site, but I recommend adding it to the Not Linked Navigation group so it's not a part of your main menu while you're adding and editing the content. Let's go ahead and click this plus sign and select events from our collection. On the next screen here, you have the option to choose either one of these layouts. There really isn't a big difference. They're equally customizable. The only difference is this layout has a page section at the top. Let's go ahead and start with this one so I can teach you how to add that yourself. Squarespace has placed this collection in the not linked section of my site, and I'll go ahead and click on this arrow so we can access that new page. Here we'll see a list of the events inside the event collection. On the left-hand side of the screen is a different way for us to navigate these events, and first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about the settings for this events collection. Clicking on this gear icon here, I can access the settings for the event list. I can change the page title, I can change the navigation title, which is what will show up in my main menu when I move this event page to that menu. I can edit the URL slug, and this part's super important, I can toggle off this option right here to disable the page so it can't be accessed by my website visitors. It's a great idea to do that while you're still editing the content. When your event is ready to be shared with others, toggle that back on and you can add it to your main navigation or send people directly to this link to access the content. Now on the left-hand side of our settings menu here, we can add SEO information like a title and description to the event, and we can add a social share image. When a link to this event is shared on a social media platform like LinkedIn or Facebook, this image will be displayed next to the link. Totally optional, but a great idea. Under advanced is where we manage the categories and tags that we can use to organize our events. And if you want to add custom code to an event, you have page header code injection available here. I'll go ahead and select save and let's take a look at the event list itself. I'm going to click on edit on the top left hand side of my website preview right here. This will take me into edit mode. You can see immediately at the very top, I have the ability to add a page section above this list of events. If I click add section, you can add any type of page section you want or even a blank one to start from scratch. This gives you an opportunity to kind of introduce the list of events if you'd like to, totally optional. I'll go ahead and select close because I'd love to show you here at the very bottom of the screen. We can add a section down here as well. If you want to add something at the bottom of your event list, like maybe a form so people can suggest a new event, just click this option and you can add any type of page section you want. All right, let's talk about this list itself. I'm sure you've noticed on the right hand side of the screen here, we have manage events and edit section. I'm going to click edit section. This takes me to the new design menu that we can use to change the way this event list is displayed. Our first option here is for height. This changes the distance between the first event and the top of the page, as well as the last event and the bottom of the page. Watch what happens when I select small, and then medium, and then large. Scrolling back up to the top, we'll see that's increased as well. You can set that to medium or small, or you can set your own custom height, whatever you'd like to use for your own unique design style. Our next option is full and inset. Pay close attention to the distance between the edge of that image and the edge of the page. When I select full, it's going to pull that image closer to the edge. Inset will bring it in from the edges of the page. Now down here, we have some display options. This is where we can choose whether or not we want to show the event thumbnail. You can toggle that off or toggle that on. We don't have past events yet, but if we did, we could display them in the list if we wanted to. And our next option is the thumbnail aspect ratio. All of these thumbnails are cropped to be the same size for every event. In this specific example, they happen to be all the same picture, but they are all cropped to be a specific size. So this is how you can change that size. You can have them be a one-to-one -one square. You can have them be four-thirds or ultra widescreen. These are your options for how that event thumbnail is cropped on the left-hand side of the page. Next, we have the date style. Right now, it's selected with text, which means the date is going to be with the text for the title and the excerpt. However, we've got two more options. We can toggle off the date completely so you can't actually see when the event is. Personally, I think that's a little silly. You're probably going to want to know when the event is happening. So you can choose with text, which is where we started, or you can choose side tag. Side tag will display the date of the event on top of the image, which I think is a pretty cool feature. 
Now, we do have show time toggled off, but I thought this was a really interesting thing to show at this point in the tutorial. If we toggle on show time, we're still not going to see it with the side tag date style. If you do want to display the time of the event on the event list, you can either manually type it here into the excerpt of the event, or let's go back to edit section and scroll down here. You'll need to select with tag for your date style. That's the only way to get the time to display automatically on this event list. Again, if you choose side tag, you can manually add it to the event excerpt, but if you want the time to display automatically, you'll need to select with text and make sure that show time has been toggled on. Now, at the time of recording this, it doesn't display time zones. I do have a tutorial linked in the description below that you can use to add a time zone to your specific events, but be aware that Squarespace doesn't have that feature by default. Okay, our next option is show location. We don't actually have any locations assigned to these events in this demo website here, but if we did, we could toggle that feature on. And then we have show export links. This is where you'll see the Google Calendar and the iCloud Calendar link. This will automatically create an event invite based off of the information you provided for the date and the time. Someone can click on this and it will download that calendar link so they can add it to their own calendar. I have another tutorial linked in the description below that will teach you how to turn that into buttons. It's a pretty cool tutorial. All right, one last thing here. We have show excerpt as our next option. If we toggle this off, all we're going to see is whatever we've left toggled on. Thumbnails, time, location, and export links. The excerpt is gone, so we can no longer see the quick description of the event. Toggle that back on, and you'll see your text there. One last thing to explore before we change the content of the event itself, and that's our color option here. This is how you can choose a color theme for your event. Whatever you select, it's going to update the style of the content here on this page to match what you've chosen for that color theme. So if you want to change things like the color of the font or the background color, make sure that you've selected the correct settings inside your site style menu for this specific color theme. All right, let's get into some of the individual event settings here. I'll go ahead and select save and exit, and we'll start with event one. If you click on this event, you'll be taken to the event page. This is where we can add content to the page of the event, but the individual event settings like the date and the time and even the title, all of that is edited by clicking on these three dots right here. Clicking on these three dots, you can select the settings for this individual event. This is where we adjust the content like the date and time, the thumbnail, and the excerpt. Clicking into date and time, you can choose the start date, and the start time, as well as the end date and the end time. And yes, you need both of them to create an event inside Squarespace. Going back to our content tab, we can change the thumbnail image here. You can remove the image and then select add image or search. If you select add image, you'll be able to grab one from, if you select add image, you'll be able to grab one from your computer. But if you select search for images, you can grab one from your asset library or search the Unsplash database or grab a premium image, whatever suits the style of your own website. I'll go ahead and select this one from my own asset library and we'll add it for this event because I've got one more important thing to teach you. Now that this image has uploaded, I want you to remember that it's automatically cropped. But this circle right here represents the focal point of the image. If I want this focal point or the center of where this image is cropped to be in a different spot, I can click to a different place on this image to move that circle around. So if you have a large image that's going to be cropped significantly, make sure you adjust that focal point so it's at the right spot for your own content. Now scrolling down here, this excerpt is what's actually displayed on that event lit that we customized. So let's add our own text here. There's some video editing magic for you. Let's go ahead and customize this text. I'm going to click on this word right here and make it bold using the text editor. We'll make this one italicized and this one underlined. Whoops, there we go. This one will turn into a bullet point and this one we're going to change to a heading three font style so it's even bigger. Now we've updated the excerpt for this individual event. I'll show you what this looks like on the main list page. Let's select save. We'll click on our main events page and now we can see that we've got a very different style excerpt than we've had before super duper customizable, and it's going to adjust what's displayed here. We have our new image and our new excerpt. All right, let's go back to the settings for this first event because we've got a little bit more to do here. Next up, we have the event URL. I recommend you customize this so it's easy to reference. And after that, you can select the author of the event and provide a source URL if you'd like to. All right, on the left-hand side of the screen, we've got some different options here. 
This is a cool feature that Squarespace has created, very similar to blog posts. Clicking into here, you can leave your event as a draft, which means you're still editing it and no one's going to be able to see this content. You can also select Needs Review to add it to your queue, or you can publish the event, which will make it live on the event page. You can also schedule it so the event is published at a specific date and time. Now back here in some of the other settings, we have tags and categories to help you organize your events. Those will be used by summary blocks if you use that feature in Squarespace. And you can also let people comment on an event and make this a featured event. Again, featured events can be helpful for summary blocks, totally optional, but that's where you can access those settings if you'd like to. For the individual event, we can also add our own SEO title and description and a unique social share image for that specific event. Our last two options here are share, where you can connect it to your social media account to easily share it, and then location, which I think is very important for events that aren't virtual. If you're having an event in a physical location, you can add this information here and it will be displayed on the event list page if you toggle that feature on. Let's go ahead and make this event at Squarespace headquarters in New York City. There we go. We'll select save and taking a look at our events page, it now says Squarespace HQ NYC and a map because we left locations toggled on. All right, one last time how we got to those settings. You click on these three dots and select settings. This is where you change the date and the time. This is where you change the thumbnail. You can update your excerpt and you have a lot of text editing options here to explore. Change the event URL. Under options is where you decide whether or not it's published, scheduled, or in draft mode. You can select categories and tags, allow for comments, and for it to be a featured event. Customize the search engine information for this individual event page. Add a social image for this individual event page. Connect it to your social media account so it's easy to share and update the location for the individual event. All right, we've covered a lot so far, but we're almost done. Home stretch, my friends, stick with me here. I'm going to click into event one and we're going to edit the content of this individual event. By selecting edit on the top left-hand side of the screen, we now have the ability to edit the content here on this right-hand side of the page. I want you to notice I can't change back to all events and I can't adjust the pagination at the bottom. All of those are automatically generated by Squarespace. I do have some tutorials linked in the description below that will help you customize that content, but all we can really do right here in the main editor is edit this section right here. This is where we add content to our individual event. If you've ever edited a blog post inside Squarespace, you'll be very familiar with this content. It's what's known as a classic editor. Clicking this plus sign allows me to add any content block that I want. We can add a scrolling text block. If I click the plus sign here, I can add a button. Maybe I want to link to where people can buy tickets for the event. The design settings for this button are very similar to what you've encountered before here inside your Squarespace website. This text editor has all the features you've seen before. You can add as many content blocks as you'd like here to this individual event, and they are completely customizable. Now, you might have noticed on the top right hand side of the screen, it says edit section. This really isn't as exciting as it could be. When we click on this option, our only ability here is to change the page spacing. Just like we saw in the event lift, this adjusts the distance between the top of the page section and the actual page content itself. We can make that small, medium, large, or custom. Again, not very exciting, but an option. Now, if you want to change the color theme for your individual event, you can select the color option here and choose one of your pre-made color themes which pulls its settings from the site styles menu that you've already selected. Again, to change the content on this right here, this section on the left-hand side, all of this is done through the event setting. All we can do on this page is adjust the content here in this right-hand column. Because this is classic editor, we can't edit mobile separately, but we can see what mobile looks like. So if I click on this option here, you'll see that the event information is at the top and the event content is at the bottom. But again, we can't edit mobile separately like a fluid engine section. This is classic editor, so we can add content blocks. A quick heads up if you've never used classic editor before, I should show you this. To change this content, you can actually create columns. We can click on this button and drag it over here to place it next to the text or maybe move this scrolling block to the bottom down here. We can change the size of this right here. It's very customizable, not quite as customizable as a fluid engine section, but feel free to drag and drop things into whatever order you want them to be in to customize this specific layout for your unique event. After you've made all the changes you want to make, select save when you're done and select exit. Now, for those of you that are creating events where you might want to have a very similar event page for all of them, 
You can click these three dots and duplicate an event so you don't have to recreate the layout every single time. Definitely a good feature to know about. Now, let's say you've made all the changes you want to this event and you're ready to add it to your main navigation. All you'll need to do is drag your events page and drop it right there into your main navigation and it will be placed inside your main menu. Just make sure you click on this gear icon and you have enabled the page. If you toggle this off while you're editing the page, make sure you toggle it back on so people can navigate to that content. Select save and you'll be good to go. Now that you've created your event collection in Squarespace, I've got some cool tricks to help you customize it. Check out the related videos linked below. And if you'd like to learn more about all the amazing things that you can do with your Squarespace website, visit insidethesquare.co forward slash start. There you'll find my training series, Squarespace Made Simple, where I'll guide you through the process of creating your own Squarespace website. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash start. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.